great day to everyone this is again your professor dr benjamin cabrera i'll be teaching on physiology regarding the male reproductive system so we'll study the intricacies of the male reproductive system my reference here would be your vernon levy the sixth uh, edition chapter 43 So let's start with the reproductive system. There are two components of the reproductive system. First would be your gonads. The gonads are composed of the testis and the ovary for the general reproductive system. It will have endocrine function and exocrine function. The exocrine function would be the process of gametogenesis. The endocrine function is a, regulated by the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis and of course your exocrine function, meaning uh, there will be excretion, would be your gametogenesis. The reproductive tract is involved in gamete development, function and transport. So what are the roles of uh, the gonadal hormones in the male reproductive system? The male reproductive system has evolved for continuous lifelong gametogenesis coupled with occasional internal insemination with high density of sperm. Uh, it should be more than 60 per 10 to the 6 per mil in a 3 to 5 ml of semen. In adult male, the basic roles of the gonadal hormones are the support of gametogenesis by the process of spermatogenesis and the maintenance of the male reproductive tract and production of semen. And third will be the maintenance of the secondary sex characteristics and libido. There is no overall cyclicity of this activity in men. So this is the sagittal view of representation of the male reproductive system. As you can note, the testis should be outside uh, with the testicular temperature about 2 degrees lower than the body temperature. The significance of this 2 degree uh, lower temperature is that it is very crucial for optimal sperm development. So here we have your and testis, okay, the scrotum containing the testis with the epididymis and later on it uh, will flow to your vas deferens, goes to your seminal vesicle and goes to the prostate, the one that will be uh, aging would later on be one of the challenges in aging and it will meet okay, along with the passage of urine from the bladder on the urethra and goes to the outside uh, through the urethra for uh, ejaculation okay. and in here uh, this is where before it meets the urethra there is your ejaculatory duct and this is the sagittal view of the penis we have your uh, corpus cavernosum, the right and left, and below would be your corpus uh, spongiosum. This is the head of the penis, commonly, uh, commonly called the head, but this is the glands of the penis. So this is the detailed structure of the testis and epididymis. The human testis is covered by a connective tissue capsule and is divided into about 300 lobules by the fibrous septa. Within each lobule, this is one lobule, are two to four loops of seminiferous tubules. 
empty. These are your seminophorous tubules. Each loop will empty to an anastomosing network of your tetetestis. Okay? That's your retetestis. Then the retetestis. Now later on empties to the efferent tactiles and later on goes to the head of the epididymis. Once in the head of the epididymis, the sperm will pass no, from the head. To the body to the tail okay so this is the body then to the tail and then to the vast uh, deference or ductus deference the viable sperm can be stored in the tail in here of the epididymis and the vast deference for several months the interstitial cells of Leydig uh, whose main function is to produce testosterone also found in its seminiferous tubules. Spermatogenesis involves a process of two processes, actually it's mitosis from cell duplication and meiosis from diploid to haploid. The stem cells okay, are your spermatogonium, which are located at the basal level of the seminiferous epithelium. Your spermatogonia divide mitotically to generate daughter primary spermatocytes. Through the process of spermatocytogenesis. Now, uh, one or more spermatogonia remain within the stem cell population and are firmly adherent to the basal lamina. So with spermatogenesis, it will be your first meiotic prophase producing your primary spermatocyte. And later on, uh, this primary uh, spermatocyte will have a chromosomal reduplication. Okay. Synapsis crossing over the homologous recombination and later on developing your secondary spermatocytes here so the spermatids later on in here are small round cells that undergo remarkable metamorphosis called your spermatospermiogenesis And later on, the sperms are released. The release of the sperm is called your, from your spermatozoon. Okay, the release would be through spermation. And spermation is uh, controlled by your sertol cell. So these are your spermatozoon. Okay. Later on, this one is your spermatozoon that later on are, are released through spermation to the surface of the seminiferous tubule. And once it's released, the nucleus that is covered by the acrosome, this is the acrosome and this is the nucleus, so this is the whole uh, of a sperm, uh, the sperm, the representation of the sperm, so it is the head, the middle piece, the principal piece, and the end piece. So on the head will be your nucleus, which is protected by your spermatosome. Then the nucleus decreases in size, and the tail, has a lot of uh, microtubular structure 
and the acrosome R is as I uh, mentioned earlier is the one that protects the nucleus so the whole process of uh, releasing uh, the spermatids to to the later on developing to a sperm uh, to uh, a spermatozoon the the process of uh, releasing of the sperm is called your spermiation and spermiation is controlled by the sertoli cells the process of spermatogenesis usually takes about 72 days and the cohort of adjacent spermatogonia enter the process every 16 days so that the process is staggered at one point along the seminiferous tubule because the seminiferous tubules is around 500 within one testis they are about 400 meters in length look that the small testis of the male has, has a 400 meter in length of seminiferous tubule so the spermatozoa are continually being generated at many sites within the testis at any given time that's how the production of millions of the sperms are being processed so let's talk about the sertoli cells or the support cells so this is your sertoli cell okay with the nucleus so this is your sertoli cell okay so sertoli cells are true epithelial cells and it has the following function first it serves as structural support then it serves to form adhering and gap junctions and will guide the sperm cells towards the lumen and this is the lumen okay so it guides the sperm from from spermatogonium and it uh, develops to primary spermatocytes to secondary later on to early spermatocytes goes to the to the lumen of the seminiferous tubule and later on when it breaks okay, it releases now it releases the sperm through the process of spermation and sertoli cell all will uh, facilitate spermation so in spermation there will now be breakdowns of the sertoli sperm cell junctions so the sertoli cell in which again in here as I've shown you uh, we need healthy sertoli cell function uh, it's very essential for sperm uh, cell viability and development. Sertoli cells are true epithelial cells of the seminiferous epithelium and extend from the basal lamina to the lumen of the seminiferous tubule. And the sertoli cell will surround the sperm cells and provide structural support within the epithelium and they form adhering gap junctions with all stages of the sperm cell and also the sertoli cell will guide the sperm cell towards the lumen as they advance the later stages of the spermatogenesis and later on when they release the spermation requires the final breakdown of the sertoli sperm cell junction which is a tight junction that forms the physical basis for the blood testis barrier the sertoli cell expresses androgen receptors okay, and uh, FSH receptors and produce uh, androgen binding proteins so the sertoli produces also a large amount of fluids and it also will have phagocytic functions and the and it has an important endocrine role by producing anti-mullerian hormone otherwise called the Mullerian inhibitory substance which induces regression of the embryonic Mullerian drug that, that is programmed to give rise to the female reproductive tract and produces also a hormone called your inhibin 
which uh, FSH which stimulates uh, the inhibin production which then negatively feeds back on the gonadotropes to inhibit FSH production thus inhibin keeps FSH levels within a set point Again, uh, the Sertoli cell, aside from the production of the very important uh, anti-malarian fa uh, hormone, also has phag phagocytic functions. Thereby, they, uh, by engulfing residual bodies, okay, which represent a cytoplasm shed by the spermatozoa during spermiogenesis. Now, let's talk about the sertoli sertoli occluding junctions. So, so these are the two sertoli. Okay? So, these are two sertoli and they form okay, communication that would be your sertoli sertoli uh, occluding junctions. With the, uh, this is now your blood testis barrier. Now, in the basal compartment, it lies the primary spermatogonia or the stem cell and later on with the early okay, early stage uh, of of your spermatocytes then on the adluminal compartment in here this is now the adluminal compartment which contains the different stages of your spermatocytes later on okay So the blood test is barrier in here. Yeah, so those are the blood test is barrier. Blocks the paracellular diffusion and restrict the movement of the substances between the blood and the germ cells, which control the availability of nutrients to the germ cells. So that's the function of the blood test is barrier. Uh, let's talk about the Leydig cells. So, the Leydig cells okay, are stereodonic stromal cells and these cells synthesize cholesterol de novo as well as acquire it through the low density lipoprotein receptors and high density lipoprotein receptors also called your scavenger receptor BI or SRBI and it stores this uh, cholesterol okay, as cholesterol esters. So th this also will now uh, lead to the production of uh, testosterone. So I, a word from Confucius, if your plan is just for a year, then plant rice. But if your plan is for 10 years, plant trees. If your plan is 100 years, you educate your children. That's a good uh, as um, words from Confucius. About uh, estrogen, the peripheral conversion of estrogen. So, the peripheral conversion of estrogen is very important because uh, it's also important in bone maturation and biology. The lack of it will mean there will be a lack of artificial closure in long bones leading to tall stature okay uh, the triple conversion to estrogen will promote insulin sensitivity it will increase the levels of your good cholesterol decreases triglycerides and uh, the bad cholesterol LDL and the conversion would uh, give a negative feedback on the pituitary gonadotropins now for the peripheral conversion now to DHT or dihydrotestosterone so yung, uh, the peripheral conversion to dihydrotestosterone wherein the testosterone can also be converted into a potent 
non-aromatized uh, androgen called your uh, 5-dihydrotestosterone by the enzyme 5-alpha-1 alpha reductase which has two isoforms okay. first would be your type 1 which is uh, very abundant during puberty it's present in the skin primarily in the skin and contributes to the activity of the sebaceous gland thus uh, also with the production of acne so your type 1 is associated with puberty and its changes next would be the type 2 okay the type 2 are all uh, found in type 2 5 alpha uh, 5 alpha reductase are found in the mid urogenital tract these are also uh, found in the skin hair follicles and in the liver the 5 alpha reductase will generate a hydrotestosterone which uh, is responsible for the masculinization of the external genitalia the growth and activity of the prostate gland, the growth of the penis, darkening and folding of the scrotum, the growth of the pubic, axillary, and facial and body hair, and in the increase of uh, muscle mass. So that's the, the effect or the action of the 5-alpha reductase type 2. So this is the spectrum of effects of testosterone. So testosterone has several metabolic effects. It includes uh, increasing the, the levels of uh, very low di density lipoprotein and so as the low density lipoprotein. So it increases the level of the bad cholesterols and decreases the level of your good cholesterol or HDL. And it um, promotes the deposition of the abdominal adipose tissue and um, it promotes or increase the production of red cells directly okay. and also promotes um, bone growth okay and health and exerting a protein anabolic effect on the muscles. Testosterone is, in, is sufficient to maintain erectile function and libido. So in here you can see the, the, the several uh, metabolic effects of your testosterone on every area. With your 5-HD it is uh, this, uh, converted to your uh, DHT, the hydrotestosterone, it has a direct effect on the prostate and its size, the growth of uh, facial hair, and also the uh, activity of the sebum. And also, with uh, the issue will be affecting the, the health of the penis and the seminal vesicles, and also the production of sperm uh, directly. It also will uh, effect uh, the, uh, the development and uh, growth of the larynx to produce the low male voice and also it is responsible for the male pattern okay, of gonadotropin the sex drive and behavior and it will also have a along with DHT directly in testosterone and your E2 give a feedback suppression of the uh, of gonadotropin secretion. Testosterone directly uh, have an influence in the health of the and development of the epididymis, vas deferens, and seminal vesicles. So these are this uh, represents the all the metabolic effects of testosterone. Now, this is the uh, hypothalamic pituitary testicular axis. Okay. Uh, so, the hypothalamus pituitary now and the 
effect on the peripheral axis. Okay, so your hypothalamus will secrete the gonadotropin releasing hormone, which will stimulate your pituitary to produce okay, your LH and FSH. Your LH will affect the Leydig cells to produce testosterone. Your FSH will uh, stimulate your Sertoli cells to produce uh, androgen binding protein and also inhibin, which will later on act to suppress or to inhibit the pituitary gonadotropes. Then your testosterone from your lady can be uh, produce and will also convert back to your testosterone uh, uh, andrian binding protein and your testosterone will be bound to your sex uh, hormone binding globulin can testosterone sex hormone binding globulin and can be released back to testosterone and high levels of testosterone will have a direct uh, inhibitory effect of the hypothalamus so as with the levels uh, conversion to DHT and E2 will have a inhibitory effect to both the hypothalamus and the pituitary. Okay. So the transport and metabolism of androgens, so 60% of uh, androgens are bound to sex hormone binding globulin or SHBG and 38% is bound to albumin and 2% is, is floats around as free hormones. So, the mode of excretion would be through the urine as 50% uh, as urinary 17 ketosteroids and 30% as 17 ketosteroids are from the testes and the rest would be uh, eliminated through the liver through conjugation with chlorinate or sulfate in the liver and uh, it will be eliminated through the bile. So let us So this is now the function of the male reproductive tract. Okay. Uh, the function should be for sperm maturation. Sperm uh, wherein the epithelium of the epididymis is uh, secretory and the components to the seminal fluid and an a unidirectionally weak motile sperms. And later on, uh, there will be decapitations, then, which will prevent the acrosome reaction of the spermatozoa. And in the, uh, there will be production of luminal testosterone, which is uh, uh, will have the, your androgen binding protein complexes. Then, another function would be sperm storage and emission. We're in the tail of the epididymis and vas deferens and, and the vas deferens propels the sperm into the urethra with the, which is thick muscularis layer which is innervated, innervated by the sympathetic nerves and sympathetic stimulation and peristaltic contraction and later on emission and ejaculation. And the next would be the production and mixing of sperm with the seminal contents. The seminal vesicle contains around 60% of vo the volume and it contains fructose, simanogelins, uh, and the prostate will contribute around 30% of the volume, which contains citrate, zinc, spermine, and acid phosphatase, and prostate-specific antigen, which are, can be uh, the one that is detected or studied in cases of uh, benign prostatic hypertrophy and in cases of prostatic carcinoma. So the prostatic secretions buffers serves as buffers of the semen with the phosphate and the bicarbonate. And later on the bulbourethral gland or otherwise called your Cowper's gland empty then into the penile urethra Will, which will have a, a secretion that is high in mucus, which will serve as lubrication, cleansing, and buffering 
later of the urethra. And the fourth uh, function would be the erection and ejaculation. Wherein, uh, this is a response to a reflex arc, which is uh, after sensory stimulation from the penis via the pudendal nerve, the sympathetic motor stimulation to the smooth muscle of the male crop, and also the somatic motor stimulation to the musculature associated with the base of the penis. Review of the anatomy of the male reproductive system. So the penis is composed of three erectile bodies wherein there is a pair of uh, corpora cavernosa right and left here and the corpus spongiosum. So the urethra runs through uh, the corpus con uh, spongiosum. These three bodies are composed of the erectile tissue with anastomosing network of potential cavernous vascular spaces okay. lined with continuous endothelial uh, tissues with a loose connective tissue support. The arrangement of the vasculature and cavernous tissue within the penis and in this one, okay. During the flaccid state, uh, the blood flow into the cavernous space is limited by the by the contraction of the helicin arteries. And these are the helicin arteries. So this one will, uh, if these are contracted, it prevents the filling up of blood so once this one will um, relax so it will fill up the blood okay for when see uh, on the erect stage okay they will be filling up of these uh, sinuses for both your cavernous uh, corpus cavernosum and your corpus spongiosum So here is the outline of the neurovascular events leading to penile reaction. So from the cavernous nerve, which is nitric, uh, nitrogic, okay, uh, it will be stimulated either by sexual stimulation, tap, either tactile, vis visual, auditory, or psychic, and it will produce uh, nitric oxide. Okay, and this one it will be on the vascular muscles of the helicin artery. This will be the reaction within that vascular muscle. So your guanyl uh, triphosphate will be acted upon by guanyl cyclase to produce your cyclic GMP. Okay. And that will now uh, produce relaxation with the relaxed uh, helicin artery. There will be increase in blood flow into the sinusoidal uh, cavernous spaces. And with subsequent collapse of the venous return from the cavernous spaces. And along with the uh, contraction of the muscles around the base of the venous secondary to sexual stimulation, will, these two uh, events will lead to erection. Now, uh, if uh, the problem now will if there will be problem now in erection as in cases of erectile dysfunction uh, we have developed uh, drugs like Viagra which is a type 5 uh, PDE inhibitor which will inhibit the, uh, the type 5 phosphodiesterase later on to produce your GMP so your uh, so your Viagra will inhibit the action of your type 5 phosphodiesterase so that it will the cyclic GMP will not be converted to GMP but rather will, will stay 
uh, and accumulate a cyclic GMP to further cause relaxation of the vascular muscles of the helicin arteries and thus uh, produce uh, erection later on. So let's talk about erectile dysfunction or what we call ED. Okay? So erectile dysfunction is the inability to achieve or maintain an erection. So these are it has several causes like insufficient androgen production in, in cases of underpose, okay? in cases of uh, trauma or neuromuscular damage, structural damage to the penis, either on the penis, in the perineum, or pelvis in, in accidents, and even psychogenic factors uh, like depression and anxiety, and of, of course medications like your beta blockers, okay? your diuretics, no? and other and recreational drugs. So at least we now have your sildenafil citrate, which is a type 5 reductase inhibitor, otherwise called your Viagra. So, let's talk about the andropause. If female has menopause, male has andropause. So, this is the male menopause. So, it is the result of a decrease in gonadal sensitivity to LH and also secondary to decrease androgen production. So, the sperm now, uh, usually the sperm will decrease in production after 50 years of age but uh, the, but still okay, the reproductive function and spermatogenesis are still uh, maintained throughout life even if if there is a decrease uh, sperm production but still the reproductive function and spermatogenesis are maintained throughout life so that's it Again, uh, thank you for listening and participating. Study very well. So, uh, this lecture has been or will be posted in my YouTube channel. So, please click uh, the thumbs up and subscribe and share this video uh, for as a lecture in physiology. Have a great day.